So before we get into the build, I'm gonna show you the equipment that we're gonna be using for this build. So we're gonna be using a 72 volt, five kilowatt motor. Uh, it's air cooled. We could have used uh, liquid cooled also, but I think it's overkill for this uh, build. Uh, a 400 amp contactor. Uh, the motor controller is gonna be the one from Easy Control. So it comes with the wiring harness, all the cables. It's labeled uh, which one is which. And I'm gonna do a bench test after this too so you can see all the connections and everything. Um, we're gonna be using a foot throttle. And finally, we're gonna be using this 72 uh, volt, 14 amp hour uh, molly cells, uh, 18, 650 molly cells. And it has a high discharge. It has a 140 amp discharge. So let me show you the bench test now. We're gonna start with the phase wires. So on this controller, it is color coded, but if it's not, the U is yellow, V is green, and the W is blue. So I'm gonna start off with taking these screws off. Next, we're gonna connect the hall sensor plug that's coming out of the motor. I connect to the main wiring harness. Uh, just in case if you're wondering, uh, this controller is a universal controller. It can work with any motor, and this motor is also universal, so they actually come with a bag of plugs, so if you wanna change out the plugs. This one is plug and play with the easy control and the gold motor. They're plug and play, but just in case if you wanna use it with other controllers or other motors, uh, it comes with the bag. Next, we're gonna connect the, the red and white terminal coming out of the battery. And actually, before I put the positive on, there, this one is the E-lock switch right here. This one actually also goes on the positive terminal. So this is important. There's an E-lock switch coming out of here. This will also, the, your motor will not turn on if this is not on the positive end. So out of the controller, there are two wiring harnesses. This one is for the CAN bus, the one, the harness with the three plugs out of it. Uh, we're not gonna need this for this project. Um, this is the main wiring harness that we're gonna be using. There's one, they're all labeled over here. This is for the throttle. This is for the uh, key switch. If you have an ignition, you just gotta make or break the uh, connection. If you're not using an ignition, then you gotta make sure it's somehow the connection is made so that the motor can work. Uh, this one is for the brake. This is for the gearing. This is for the left brake. Um, there is reverse on this motor controller, so that's really good. We're gonna be using this for the go-kart too. The gas one didn't have reverse, but we're gonna put reverse on this. And finally, this one is for cruise control. So for the throttle, I'm gonna install the throttle now. The foot throttle and the joystick throttle for the boats, they're plug and play. Um, and by the way, if you're using a twist throttle, twist throttle is not plug and play, but I'm gonna show you how to make a plug. So if you already know how to make a plug, then you can skip to the next part. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to make a plug. But for now, I'm gonna connect it to the um, foot throttle. So this one is plug and play. I'm gonna show you how to make a plug. So if you don't need this part, uh, just forward this part. So you start out with just cutting off the old plug. Um, and then stripping these wires. So the good thing about this throttle that we sell, um, the color is the same. So you're gonna be connecting to the three pin plug on the controller. Colors are the same, black, green, and red. Um, they go to the same colors, but any universal controller, you just gotta make sure um, which colors for what. So let's strip them. Once all three of them are stripped, so basically after that, you're gonna grab this three pin plug from the, the, bag, the bag of plugs that came in, and then three of these metal uh, things that you're gonna put on the wire. So basically what you are doing is, you're taking one of these metal things and make sure there's a good connection, and then using a crimper or even a, you can use your fingers for this to actually works. Make sure the connection is solid, it's not moving. And you close it on the wire basically. I'm not gonna use this, just close it with this. A stronger connection. There we go. Now 
that's strong. Let's make this stronger too. Yeah, it's better if you use a plier. I'm just using the stripping tool, it works well. And then you're gonna insert it from this end. So make sure, I'm just gonna check the connection on the controller, how it's gonna go. So it's gonna go in like this. So the green one is the middle one. So this is gonna go in the middle. It's gonna come out of this end. There we go. So you can see it on the camera, it's in the middle right there. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the red and black. Once you're done with that, um, all you gotta do with this, this another little piece, plastic piece comes in there. Oops, sorry. It comes with the plugs and all you gotta do is put it in so that it keeps the plugs securely in place. So the final product will basically look like this right here and then you just plug it in. So that's it, not too hard. So for the gold card, we are gonna have reverse on there. So all you need is any kind of toggle switch that can uh, close and open the circuit basically. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna find the ones that labels reverse. It's a gray and black plug. Plug this in. So now we have reverse on this motor. And finally, we have to close a circuit on the one that's coming of the key switch. Basically, this is where the, the ignition will go in for the go-kart. Um, if you are not using any kind of ignition, um, you can use like a jumper cable or even a paper clip, but I wouldn't recommend a paper clip, something with an insulation. The jumper cable and you just gotta like insert it there and just close the circuit basically. But I do have, for this twist throttle, I do have a plug made for the ignition. Um, I'll make it for the go-kart later. And then I have the key too, so that will break and open and uh, close the circuit. Uh, this setup is without a DC contactor. After I'm done with this bench test, I'm gonna show you how to connect it with a DC contactor. So this setup is done. Okay, so let's turn on the battery. We got power. So when I close the circuit with the key, like we should hear one beep and that means it's good. Um, on the screen, I'll put down um, like a list of errors. Basically, when you hear different kinds of beeps, there's a whole list of errors. It's pretty easy to diagnose. All right, let's try this. Yeah, so we have one beep. It's good to go. And let's try it out. There you go. So that was going clockwise. So now if I toggle the switch for the reverse, it should go counterclockwise. There we go. There you go. So the reverse is going much slower than the forward, which is a good thing. You can adjust this in the, the Bluetooth um, app for the controller, but that's it. Yeah. So now if, stay tuned. If you want to see how to connect it with the contactor, which we'll be doing for the go kart, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to show you that connection. Now I'm going to show you the setup with the DC contactor. It's definitely much more involved, but it is safer for your setup. Um, on your DC contactor, there is a A1 side and an A2 side. So be very careful of that. That will matter. Um, so from the, the negative end from your battery, directly from your battery, it's going to be like before you plug in directly into the controller. So that's no change over there. So the positive terminal coming from your battery, instead of plugging into the controller, you will be plugging that on the A2 side. The A2 side, so that's there. And then the E-lock switch will be, instead of going on the positive terminal that we had on before, it will be actually with the, on the A2 side, on the main terminal on the DC contactor. So these are good to go. And then from your controller, um, you have to make this connection. So you have to make permanent plugs for this, but right now I'm gonna show you with alligator clips, uh, just on the bench test. So from the controller, it's gonna go on the A1 side on the main terminal on the DC contactor. Okay, um, two more connections. So for these ones, I'm gonna zoom in because we have to go to the main wiring harness for this one. So out of your main wiring harness, um, there is an isolated gray plug that's coming out. 
Um, I'm going to put the picture of the this whole connection on the screen right now. So if you want to refer to that, that would be easier too. Uh, but this gray wire is specifically meant for the DC contactor. So this will go on the secondary connection, secondary connection right here on the DC contactor. So I'm going to use another alligator clip, make the connection between this gray wire and the A1 over here. And last connection, last connection. Um, so on your E-lock switch, there is the one that goes directly to the A2 right here. And the second wire right here, I made a little small little splice from the second wire. Basically you have to extend this wire out all the way to the A2. Um, right now I just made a little splice right here. Um, I'm not going to do that on the build, definitely not, not safe, but I'm going to use the alligator clip right now to make this connection. And there we go. This is your connection right here. So when I turn on the battery, uh, we will get the uh, power. And then when I turn the ignition, uh, we should hear the one beep and we should hear the contactor click. So that means our, so if we get one beep, we're good to go and we hear this click then our setup is complete. So let me show you that. Once you have all your connections complete, we'll turn on our battery. We'll see power on our throttle. And once I turn the ignition, uh, we'll hear that one beep that we heard before. That means the controller is working fine. And if the contactor is connected properly, we'll hear the contactor click. And that means our connection is complete. So let's try it out. Turn the th battery on. We got power. And now let's see if we get the light and the control, uh, the contactor click. There we go. Okay, so this is your connection with the contactor. Once again, if you want to see a diagram of all of this, I'm going to put it in the description below. Uh, now let's get on with the build. Okay, we have everything connected now. Let's turn the battery on. There you go. So we have a display now. So this is basically the basic screen right here, but if you want to add more stuff to it, like a lot of fun, nerdy stuff, you can put the potentiometer, you can put a speed sensor now on it, a lot of different cool things on auxiliary cable. So uh, for that, I got to make a separate video, but if you want to hook up a display, uh, this is how to do it on this easy control. Mm -hmm.